A new formula authoring tool is long overdue, and while Excel's Advanced Formula Environment, or AFE for short, is still in its early stages of development, it's already very useful, particularly if you're scared to write your own lambdas, because it can write them for you. Now you may have seen me use it a few times in tutorials lately, but recently it's undergone an update with some notable improvements, so I'm going to cover it in more detail in this tutorial. First of all, you can get the free AFE add-in from the Office Store, or via the Insert tab, and then Get Add-ins. And then up here, simply type in the name, and click Add, and then you'll be able to access it via the Home tab, and then over on the far right. It opens up in a separate pane, and you can left click and drag it out and resize it if you prefer. Now the AFE is split into three main sections, the grid, names, and modules. The grid enables you to enter formulas in cells, much like typing in the formula bar, except it automatically wraps the formula onto separate rows for each component and applies some color coding. So I'm going to index the sales amounts. You can see the IntelliSense recognizes the function name and I can tab to enter index or use my arrow keys to choose a different function. I want to index. Now it doesn't yet enter the opening parentheses, so I have to type that in. And I also don't have support for using my mouse to select the cell ranges, so I need to type them in as well. So it's D2 to D26. Alternatively, because my data is in a table, I can reference the table names using the IntelliSense. So it's recognized table. I can tab to select it, opening square bracket, and I want to index the sales, close my square bracket. And then I'm going to use match to find the value in cell G2. I have to type it in. And the array we're looking up is table one and the products. Close my square bracket on that. And then I want an exact match, so that's zero. Close match, close index, and click the check mark to finish the formula. You can see in the AFE, it nicely wraps the formula and color codes it for me. Whereas in the formula bar, it's still only on one line. If you want that wrapped effect in the formula bar, you just need to click the check mark again and it writes it up there for you and we can see it there. And that's particularly handy if you have a lot of nested functions because it makes troubleshooting much easier. The names tab is similar to the name manager for defined names. The first section contains functions that you write yourself. That is your lambdas. You can also easily author new lambdas from here by clicking on the plus symbol. And the nice thing about using the AFE to write lambdas is it does all the hard work for you. For example, I can convert this formula that checks if a value is between an upper and lower limit to a lambda. I'll give the function a name, call it between inc because it's between an upper and lower limit and inclusive of those limits. We can give it a description. You might also like to enter some information about the various arguments if it's not self-explanatory. And then we need to define the arguments. I've got three, an upper limit. So I'm just going to call that up, press enter, a lower limit and the value. Then my three arguments. And then all I need to do is write my formula. So it's equals median. And again, we have the IntelliSense here, open parentheses, so on up. And it's recognized my argument is already named low and value, close parentheses on median, and I'm checking whether it equals the value. And then all I need to do is click done, and my formula has been saved. Now it should save it to the name manager. If it doesn't, you can click save again, and then it should be there. So let's take a look. If we go into the formulas tab and open the name manager. There's my formula. And if you look down here, you can see it's added the lambda part for me. I haven't had to know how to write it. So I'll click close and let's just test that it works. Equals between ink. There it is in the list. Tab to select it. And I need to give it an upper limit, a lower limit, and a value. Close parentheses. And there's my result. And I can just left click and drag it down. And we can see it correctly evaluates the next row as well. Easy peasy. Another option is to generate lambdas from formulas in the grid. And you can convert calculations that are split into steps across several cells into a single lambda. 
I have a formula here that extracts parts of a string and then rearranges them into a product code. So you can see the first formula is a mid function with search. The second one is also a mid function with search. And then we join the two results together to create the product code. So I'll select the cells that contain my formulas. Alternatively, if you just have one cell, you just select the one cell. And then I need to click this icon here that has the spreadsheet with the plus. It detects the range containing my calculation, but you can override that here. Again, you can't use the mouse to select the cells. You have to type them in at the moment. And then I need to give it the parameters. I only have one parameter and that is the string in cell B5. And the output cell is my final cell E5. Let's click preview and take a look. I'll just make it a little bigger. I'm going to change the function name. It's automatically detected it. Let's just get rid of the space. And then you can see it's picked up some default names, which aren't really what I had in mind. It's populated the actual string as the first argument. All I need to do to change that argument's name globally is F2 to select it. And then this one's going to be called string one. Press enter and you can see it's changed both instances of it. And then down here, for some reason, it didn't like the two for second string. So it's just called it underscore end string. Let's F2 to rename that. We'll call it string two. And it's renamed all the instances of string two. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to click create and it's saved it. If it doesn't appear in your name manager, you can click save again. Let's test it in the grid product code. There it is there. I like to give my lambdas a combination of upper and lower case in the name. It just helps me identify that they're not built in functions. You could alternatively use the lambda symbol. I've seen that done as well. So all I need to do is give this the string that's in that cell there. And there we go. Let's copy it down. And you can see now I have written a lambda without actually having to write the lambda. I've had Excel's AFE do it for me. The next group under names are ranges, and these simply list any named ranges in the file. However, it currently doesn't include tables. The formulas tab contains formulas that you write and define with a name. Now it could be a constant like the VAT rate here, or it could be reference to a spilled array like the categories name. You'll notice in this file, I have the categories reference twice once referencing the spilled array. So referencing this cell here, and that will allow it to update to pick up any additional categories that get added over time. Whereas the defined name under ranges only references these cells. If the spilled array grows or shrinks, this name is not going to update. So it's best to always reference spilled arrays like this with the hash operator. I've created the two references here just to illustrate the differences. And lastly, the modules tab is used to store collections of named formulas defined using just code files from GitHub or imported from the grid. For example, on this GitHub page, I can see some lambdas that use if with is functions to return an alternate value of true. And I can download these functions in this gist file and upload them to my Excel file. So let's copy the link and then we'll go back to Excel. Now they can be added to the workbook module or a new module. I'm going to add them to both just so you can see the differences. We'll start with the workbook module and I'm going to import them from a URL, paste in the link and import. You can see them there. They're now in my file and then click save and then go to the grid and you'll see I can find them in my IntelliSense. So if blank, if logical, if number and if text. Alternatively, I could create a new module and we'll give it a name. I'll call it if lambda and add. And then we want to import it from the URL. Import. There they are there. Let's save them in the grid. Now we have if blank, if logical, if number and if text, which are in my workbook module. And the new ones in the if lambda module are prefixed with if lambda and then a dot. Of course, you normally only import them once. I've done it twice here just to illustrate the differences in the naming convention with the custom module having the prefix of the module name. Now formulas saved in the AFE are also in the name manager. We can see them all here. If you share the file with someone else, then they'll have access to those functions in the file. 
just the same as any other defined names. If you work in a language other than English, you can override your local language and edit formulas in English via the settings in the top right. The AFE has some support for localization of formulas, but not for the localization of app text. Now, formulas in the AFE must be edited using a comma argument separator, like this one here. However, it will interact with workbooks using other separators like the semicolon. It will eventually support full formula localization rather than requiring comma argument separators, but for now, when reading or saving a formula, the AFE will automatically translate between formats, so you don't have to worry. I hope you found this useful. Keep in mind that this tool is still in development, so features and interfaces that you've seen in this tutorial may be different by the time you come to use it. Now you can download the Excel file containing the examples for this lesson from the link here and have a go yourself. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.